Assalamu alaikum. Today in this tutorial, we are going to talk about the metacarpal bones. And this tutorial will be the continuation of the previous lesson in which we were talking about the carpal bones. There are five miniature long bones which are numbered from the lateral side to the medial side as first, second, third, fourth and fifth. And these miniature bones means they are long bones but they are small in size as compared to the long bones in the upper limb and the lower limb that is for example the humerus and the femur. For each individual metacarpal bone there are some important features and important landmarks. There are three important landmarks. The first one is the base, the most proximal part is the base as you can see here and as usual for a long bone this is the shaft this is the shaft and the distal part this is the head so please don't confuse that the head is not in the proximal part but it is the distal one this is the head and this is the base base means the starting point of the bone and it is articulating with the carpal bones and the heads, these heads are forming the knuckles when the fingers are flexed. So right over here, when you flex your finger, these are the knuckles formed by the head of the four metacarpal bones. And the shaft, as you can see here, it is concave anteriorly. It is concave anteriorly on the palmar surface and the base here one two three four five the base are irregularly sapped that means they are not similar in the structure and that's all about the important common features of the five metacarpal bones now coming to each individual bones and their distinct properties distinct characteristics for the first metacarpal bone, it is the shortest and the stuffedest means uh, the thickest of all the metacarpal bones. And the base is convexo concave articular surface. Uh, the base of the trapezium, this is the convexo concave means half of this base is convex and the half of the base is concave. That's the reason why it is called convexo concave articular surface and the head is less concave uh, less convex uh, as compared to the base and a broader it is broader than the base and lying more anteriorly the first metacarpal bone lying more anteriorly than uh, other metacarpal bones it is rotated medially through 90 degree Rot uh, it is rotated medially through 90 degree uh, so that it lies in the anterior part, anterior position, so that it can uh, oppose the remaining fingers, you see. So the opposition of the finger is provided by the 90 degree rotation. As you can see here, these are the metacarpal bones, but this metacarpal bone has already rotated anteriorly to 90 degree so that it can oppose the fingers. That is a very important point. And lastly, for the first metacarpal bone, this bone doesn't articulate, doesn't articulate with any one of the metacarpal bones. Uh, and it also uh, doesn't articulate with any of the carpal bones except the trapezium. And as for the attachment of the muscles, first of all, the opponent's policies is inserted on the lateral surface of the shaft. As right, you can see right over here, this is the opponent's policies. And the abductor pollicis longus is inserted on the lateral side of the base. This is the abductor pollicis longus. So I am sewing abductor pollicis longus right over here. When you extend your thumb, you can see a depressed area this is the anatomical snuff box and this this one is the uh, 
uh, medial side because it is not in the anatomical position because this will be the anatomical position but I am showing uh, here not in the anatomical position that is why this is uh, the medial and this medial one is the tendon of the uh, extensor uh, extensor extensor pollicis longus and this one is the extensor pollicis brevis and more laterally this part is the extensor uh, abductor pollicis longus so I am showing the ex abdu abductor pollicis longus this one is the abductor pollicis longus and the first palmar enterosius muscle is inserted on the uh, ulnar side of the shaft so this is the ulnar side of the base uh, this is base and this is the part of the shaft so this is the first uh, palmar enterosius muscle and as for the second metacarpal bone there is a groove at the base and it has two edges one is the medial and one is the lateral and as you can see here the medial part is larger than the lateral side so this is the distinct property distinct characteristic of the second metacarpal bone as for the insertions as for the attachment to the muscles the flexor carpi radialis is inserted on a tubercle this tubercle this very tubercle uh, on the palmar surface at the base so this is the base and this muscle is the flexor carpi radialis and this one is the uh, second this is the first and so this is the second palmar interosseous muscle lastly the oblique head of the ad adductor pollicis is also inserted right over here so this is the palmar surface of the base so it also arises from this area and as for the articulation this muscle uh, uh, this bone this second metacarpal bone it articulates with four bones one is the trapezium this is a trapezoid, capitate, and the third metacarpal bone. With these four bones, the second metacarpal bone articulates. As for the third metacarpal bone, the distinct characteristic of this third metacarpal bone is that the base has a little styloid process right over here. This part. This is styloid process, which projects uh, upwards from the dorsal lateral corner and this third metacarpal bone as this is the third one it articulates with three bones you can see here the second metacarpal the capitate and the fourth metacarpal bone so the third metacarpal bone articulates with three different bones mm -hmm. as for the attachment to the muscles a slip from the flexor carpi radialis is inserted on the palmar surface of the base this one palmar surface of the base and the oblique head of the adductor pollicis also arises from the uh, base of the palmar surface from the palmar surface of the base and lastly the transverse head of the adductor pollicis the transverse head of the adductor pollicis arises from the distal two thirds of the palmar surface of the shaft. This. As for the fourth metacarpal bone, it has two oval facets on its lateral side for the articulation with the third metacarpal and uh, with the capitate bone. It also has one elongated facet right over here for the articulation with the hamate bone. And this fourth metacarpal bone articulates with four different bones the third metacarpal the capitate the hamate as well as the fifth metacarpal bone as for the insertion of the muscle it has only one uh, attachment that is the interosseous muscle this is the palmar interosseous this is the third palmar interosseous because this is not the palmar interosseous as we have discussed this is the first palmar interosseous this is the second and this is the third so the third metacarpal doesn't have uh, the palmar interosseous muscle
And coming to the fifth metacarpal bone, the fifth metacarpal bone on its uh, base has an elongated articular strip right over here. This articular uh, elongated articular strip it articulates with the fourth metacarpal bone and it also has uh, a tubercle on its medial side this is non-articular this is non-articular because it is not articulating with any other bone there is no any other bone that is why this is the free end and it doesn't articulate so this is non-articular tubercle and uh, this is the articular uh, articular extension articular projection or the elongated articular strip simply you can say elongated articular strip for the articulation with the fourth metacarpal bone and this bone articulates with only two bones the hamate as you can see here as well as with the fourth metacarpal bone as for the insertion of the muscle as for the attachment of the muscle the opponent digit minimi is inserted on the medial side of the shaft you can see here so this is the opponent's DZT minimi and this muscle this is the fourth palmar interosseous muscle so we have four palmar interosseous and a four dorsal interosseous and now coming to the dorsum of the hand we have eight interosseous muscles I am showing the anterior as well as the uh, posterior that is the palmar as well as the dorsal interosseous muscles all together so there are eight interosseous muscles four of them are the palmar as we have already drawn we have already discussed on the palmar surface and the remaining four will be the the dorsal interosseous muscles that, that's all and there are two only two important landmarks right over here on the base of the dorsum of the of the second and the third metacarpals this is the extensor carpi radialis bravis and this one is the extensor carpi radialis longus so bravis means the shorter one uh, and the longus means the longer one so you, you can uh, remember uh, these two muscles uh, because of their similarity uh, the extensor carpi radialis bravis extensor carpi radialis longus so dear friends that is all about the metacarpal bones if you like our videos thumbs up and share and if you don't subscribe the channel please subscribe and switch the notification on for getting information about any new upcoming videos in the channel our next topic will be phalanges until next time I'm waiting for you thank you so much